Come on, pick up the phone, man. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Josh, hey, what's up, man? So look, I know that you said that the Core 500 toaster can fit full-size video cards and AIO liquid coolers, but dude, I, I can't even fit the motherboard in the damn thing, so what's the deal? What? No, dude. I said the Core 500 is like the size of a toaster. What the hell are you doing right now? Wait, so... If that's not the Core 500... The Core 500 from Fractal Design provides top-class cooling and supports full-size hardware and a compact design. Click the link in the description to learn more. Bread toasting only supported with AMD chips. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of my very impromptu mini-series uh, where I build and test a potato PC, essentially. And um, I, that's a bit misleading of a name for this rig because it's not really a full PC. As you can see, there's no case. It's just lying here on my table. Uh, it's also a mishmash of components, some of which are potato and some of them are definitely not. Um, the reason why I called it a potato build is mainly talking about the video card here, the GeForce GT 610. It's a 45-ish dollar video card, um, and it's got 2 gigs of VRAM, uh, DDR3 memory that is. And I guess that's kind of part of what this video is all about, is is a $45 video card even worth it? What, can, what kind of performance can you expect to see in game, and is something like that even comparable to, uh, let's say, the onboard graphics in our CPU here, which is a G3258 from Intel. Very nice dual core, uh, overclockable processor, so it's definitely not uh, potato quality. Can still run some pretty some pretty decent games. Um, however, it's got Intel HD 4000 series graphics on it, and a lot of people in the comments were saying, well, dude, Kyle, this video card's probably not even as good as the, the, the onboard GPU in that, in that CPU. And uh, that's what we're here to test today, okay? So if you guys haven't seen part one of the video, go ahead and check that out. Make sure you're sitting down for that one. In case you just didn't want to watch part one for understandable reasons, uh, we are working with some hardware here, including the ASRock H81M motherboard. Initially, I thought you could do some overclocking with this board, but it turns out that's the H81M HDS, I believe. Uh, so no overclocking, just kind of goes right in with the, the potato theme here. We've got a four gig stick of Ripjaws uh, X memory DDR3 from G-Skill, and then we've also got some storage. Uh, we've got a WD Black 2 terabyte and a Crucial M4 SSD 64 gig. Uh, the other thing that's certainly not potato in this build is the power supply. It's a 650 watt earth watts unit from Antec, and it's 80 plus platinum. It probably costs more than all these parts combined. I don't know if that's true, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, again, I just had these parts lying around, so that's why they're in no means a recommendation of parts you should get for a single system. Um, but yeah, that being said, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks, because I did run some tests between the Intel HD 4000 series graphics on our G3258 against our GT610 GPU. So uh, you're a little bit far away. Why don't you get up closer to the monitor here? Oh, shit. Okay, so i um, playing Half-Life 2 right now. This is the first game I tested at 1920 by 1080. This is the only game that performed actually really well and was very playable on um, both the integrated graphics and our GT610. Where is this guy? Die, you sucker. You can see the frame rate counter, uh, courtesy of Fraps in the upper left corner there. I might have to go full screen or something. But, uh, oh no, I'm out of ammo. Oh no. Damn you. Damn you, wood. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we got about average of 52 frames per second on uh, the integrated graphics, and then up to 88 on uh, the, the, our discrete GPU there, which is a nice bump, actually. A uh, bigger bump than I was expecting, to be honest. And we saw that same trend continue with uh, minimum and max frame rates as well. Um, so definitely very playable, which isn't too surprising, considering this is a really old game. Uh, using that old-school source engine and stuff um, But you know, it's it's still pretty nice that uh, that you can play Half-Life 2 uh, with relative smoothness Why is my crowbar punching bullet holes into the wall? This is weird. The next game I tested out was good old Brawlhalla Kind of like a, a rip on Super Smash Brothers if you will very nice game, but um, I wanted to test out a couple of these you know two-dimensional games because I imagine that's the type of title that uh, people are gonna be playing if they decide to invest in one of these video cards at that price point. And what we found here was uh, actually, this Brawlhalla was an anomaly 
out of all the games I tested because it was the only one where we saw it increase performance, uh, drastically increase performance with the um, with the Intel HD 400 or 4000 series uh, integrated graphics, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm not sure if that's just because the GPU was doing something funky. This is just a CPU intensive game. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, at any rate, the game was still playable even with the GT 610, which got about uh, 30 frames per second on average, 30 to 31. Whereas the uh, the uh, Intel HD 4000 saw double that, like I said, 60 or almost 60 frames per second. So, but either way, when you're playing a game like this, if it's not like a 3D, you know, first-person shooter or something like that, you don't really notice too much uh, the frame rates, unless you're going dipping below 30, then it gets noticeably choppy. Um, but it wasn't really doing that for me. I was hovering above 30 most of the time, even with the GT 610, and uh, I would consider this game also pretty playable. Uh, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, um, I am gaming with the integrated graphics right now. So uh, the discrete card is not installed. We're just uh, doing this little demo here with our Intel HD 4000. So the next game on the list is uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. So very much like Brawlhalla, this is a 2D game, not super intensive. Um, and we go back to our original trend here of seeing increased performance with the discrete GPU. Uh, we went from 25 to almost 32 frames per second, um, which is a, a nice bump over the Intel integrated graphics. And uh, gameplay was fairly, you know, I mean, like I said, like, like with Brawlhalla, uh, 30 FPS in a game like this isn't that bad, especially if you're able to hit that consistently. Um, so I would consider this game very playable on, on both uh, the Intel graphics and the discrete GPU. Getting slaughtered right now. I'm not really playing any of these games. I'm just talking while sucking. Next up, we've got Rocket League. And unlike the last two games, you can actually change some of the graphical settings here. Uh, both Brawlhalla and Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time have lock settings. So I couldn't really mess around with that. Um, however, the last three games that we've seen so far have all been 1920 by 1080. This one as well. Uh, the only title I had to crank the resolution down was our next, our last one, but we'll get to that in a bit. Video, uh, you can see I've got everything set to performance. Didn't want to go high quality, otherwise it runs like potato. And uh, we've got 1920 by 1080 right there. So uh, let's go ahead and try jumping into game. So as you can see, uh, frame rates are very bad with the integrated graphics. We averaged about 19 FPS uh, with also you know horrible min and maxes all around. Uh, however, we did get a nice bump from using that GT610. And uh, it actually was much more playable with the discrete GPU. Uh, that, I think that's probably the, this is the game where I noticed the biggest difference in gameplay um, over all the others. So uh, yeah, and just look how bad Rocket League looks. I didn't even know it could look this bad. Is that even possible? This is, I mean, still better than Xbox One, but I mean, still, come on, guys. So the last game I tested was good old Chivalry, and uh, I got Chivalried, like, really badly. Both both the Intel HD graphics and the, uh, the discrete card struggled immensely with this game. And this was the only game that I actually had to turn the settings down to 720. And I'll give you a quick look here at the... Uh, at the settings, we, we cranked it down to 720 and lowest possible settings that we could, and still just getting slaughtered on the frame rates. Oh, getting slaughtered on my neck. Hey, hey, oh, geez, I'm giving myself a... That's not right. But yeah, this game, I would not call this playable. Uh, as you can see, 17, 18 frames per second. Even with the, um, whatchamacallit, even with the discrete card, with the higher, slightly higher frame rates, still not playable because this is not, uh, this is a 3D FPS game and you can really notice the difference in choppiness here going uh, with, with the low frame rates. So before I embarrass myself anymore, let's just, oh, too late. All right, my brothers and sisters. So what can we take away from today's testing, if anything at all? Uh, well, for starters, I can confidently say, now that I've run the benchmarks, that the GT610 does outperform the Intel HD 4000 series graphics in most games. Uh, there was one game, Brawlhalla, where it was complete backwards, but I'm not sure why. Uh, but for the most part, you are going to see some performance increase with getting a GPU like this. However, the performance increase isn't that great. Uh, in some games, more than others for sure, but especially due to the nature of games that you might be playing on a system like this, uh, a lot of 2, 2D games in particular, uh, you're not gonna notice a huge difference in those extra frames. 
Um, for example, with Brawlhalla and uh, what was the other game that I tested? Uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Um, I couldn't tell the difference between 30 and 60 FPS, so really making this upgrade wasn't really doing anything for me, and it was kind of wasted money in those examples. However, if you're doing something like Rocket League, something more 3D or, or FPS even, uh, like, like Chivalry, then you will notice a bit of a performance boost. Now, is that performance increase and gameplay experience worth the $45 that you pay for this thing? No. And that's why I would not recommend anyone buying a card like this or in this caliber. If you're really looking to upgrade from Intel HD 4000 series graphics or something similar, then just fork out the extra. This is already $45. Just spend like $70 more and get something like a GTX 750 Ti, for example, because that's going to be so much better than this thing and, and your money is going to be so much more well spent that way as well. You're, you're going to essentially open up a huge number of possibilities when it comes to more games that you're able to play at decent settings. You know, with a, with a 750 Ti, you can pretty much play, um, a, you can play a lot of titles at 1080 on medium to high settings. And, uh, you know, AAA titles, you can crank the settings down to make them playable as well even at 1080. Whereas this, you're not playing any AAA titles. I don't care if you're, you know, gaming at 240p. It's just not gonna happen. It doesn't have the, the, the bandwidth or the, the speed. So, um, on that note, yeah. Don't buy this. That's the moral of this story. Don't buy this. Just, just get something better and you will be all the more happy for it. So that's pretty much gonna conclude it for this little mini PC potato, potato PC thing series, parter video, YouTube. Yes, uh, but hope you, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and toss me a like on the video if you did, and feel free to leave me your thoughts on all of this, all of these findings in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about these numbers. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video really soon. Have a good day. I love you all.